Okay, so the video for exercise 5b, solving probability problems with Venn diagrams. So if we just do a quick um, revision using John Venn's first ever diagram. Do you get it? <laughs> so that curly E, remember, represents the entire set. We put a box with two circles inside. So that's called names of people set A, names of diagram set B. So the intersection where John Venn wrote me. Okay, is represented by A, the little n, and B, and that's where the two sets overlap each other. Okay, um, other things, uh, regions in a Venn diagram that we're going to use would be this one where you'd have the two sets combined, and that's what we call the union of the two sets. Okay, so that's where um, the stuff is in both. Okay. Um, other things um, from your IGCSE uh, were um, let's just draw the box back on with the curly E for entire set set A, set B um, other ones you could have would be um, things like this where we've got everything that's not in that set so if you look at what I'm shared at the moment that's everything that's not in set A uh, notation we use to describe that would be A, the little dash. So it's A dash. It's called the complement of set A. So this is the stuff that's not in A. Probability of um, Venn diagrams. Right, for example then, we'll um, do an example from the book where we've got the following experiment. A card is chosen at random for a pack of 52 playing cards. C is the event the card is chosen as a club. And K is the event the card is chosen as a king. So first of all, we put that information into a Venn diagram, represented that way, and then we're going to uh, use the Venn diagram to work out a list of probabilities, which I'll write out in a second. So we've got our box, which is the entire set, and two circles representing the event C and K. So the intersection between C and K will be the card, that's a club, and the king. So that's going to be the king of clubs. There's only one king of clubs in a pack of playing cards. So we put number one there to represent one card that is a king and a club. Okay. Again, and then for the circle for K, there's four kings in a pack of playing cards. We've already got one of them, the king of clubs. So in that little moon shape on the right-hand side, we'll put the number three, which represents the other three kings. Similarly, with the C circle... Um, there's 13 clubs in a pack of playing cards, so we've already got one of them, so we need a 12 to go into that other part of the circle. Okay. Then also, we're only dealing with clubs and kings at the moment, so there's all the diamonds and heart cards and the spades cards as well. So if we do 52, take away 12 plus 1 plus 3, so we just do a quick calculation on the side. That's going to be 52 take away 16. Okay. Um, and then that number is going to go outside the circles in that box, so it'll be 36. Okay. So then that's everything. All the sections of our Venn diagram are filled in. So now we can use that because we know there's 52 car cards in the pack to work out some probabilities. So the probability of the event C. That means the probability of picking a card that's a club. So we've got 13 cards all together in our C circle. Okay, so that's going to be 13 over the total, so it'll be 13 over 52, 
which is equal to a quarter. If you think there's four suits in a pack of playing cards, only one of the suits is a club, so that might have been an easier way to do it. But we want to show how we can use Venn diagrams to solve some of these problems before you get into the harder ones. So let's have a look at the probability of the intersection between the event C and the event K. So that's the intersection in the Venn diagram. So what you're looking for is the king of clubs. So there's only one number in that section on my Venn diagram. So the answer is just going to be simple. It's 1 over 52. Okay, so they're not particularly tough at the moment. But let's see if there's a harder one coming up. Probability of C union K. So that's the probability, basically, of picking a card that's either a club or a king or both. So the intersection, so the union, is 12 plus 1 plus 3 is 16 over 52. Okay? Then if you can, you want to um, simplify them as well and cancel them down. There's that one. So again, quite easy at the moment. But what if we've got one like the probability of the complement of C? Alright, so that's everything that's outside of C. That's going to be the 3 and the 36. So if we add those two together, that will be 39 over 52. Okay. And again, if we cancel that down, we get uh, 3 over 4. And again, if you think in terms of a pack of playing cards, the complement of C will be picking a heart, diamond, or a spade. So there's three suits there of the four. So what if we want the probability of the complement of K with the intersection of C? So that's not a king and a club. Okay, so it's going to be the intersection of, not in K, so if we just shade that, kind of diagonally to the right, and then if we shade C um, with lines but going in the other direction, and basically, if you're looking for the intersection, it's where you get that cross-hatched shading. So in that little crescent shape over there. It's a nice, easy way to locate the region that you're looking for. Okay? If I wanted the union, it'd be everything I've just shaded. So I'm just looking for that 12. So the probability of the complement of K with the intersection of C would be 12 over 52, which will cancel down to 3 over 13. Now, without a Venn diagram, that last one particularly would have been quite tough. Okay? Right, off you go. One more example. Right then, so this example will help you with the later questions in the exercise, right? It's quite a complicated one because you've got a, a vet serving 100 of her clients and she's it's about them owning dogs, cats, and tropical fish. Okay, obviously, there'll be some people that don't own any of those three as well. All right, so we've got um, so our Venn diagram, because we're dealing with three events, we'd have to have three circles. So one representing dogs, cats, and tropical fish. Okay, and you want to, almost like the Olympic um, logo, have them all intersecting each other. So we'll have dogs there, cats there, and tropical fish there. And obviously, remember, you've got the entire set as well. Now, you've got to take the information from these questions quite literally, all right? So when it says 25 people own dogs, that doesn't tell us how many of own dogs and cats, or dogs and tropical fish, or dogs and cats and tropical fish, all right? It's just telling the 24 people own a dog, they could have another pet as well. Same with cats and same with tropical fish as well. Okay, so we, that, those 53 and those 40, we don't know how many own the others as well. Similarly with these ones, 15 own dogs and cats, but that's that little rugby ball shape there, so we don't really know how many people own a dog, a cat, and a tropical fish as well. So you have to take this information quite literally. Now, quite often, it's the last bit of information is the bit you can start with. So if we know seven people own all three pets, then we can stick a seven in that middle bit. And then just cross that out because we've used that bit of information. Really, these kind of questions, I'm going to treat them like a puzzle, really. All right, so now we know 11 people own dogs and tropical fish. Because we know now how many people own dogs and tropical fish together with the cats, 
in that little left hand bit of the rugby ball, we can put a 4, because 7 plus 4 equals 11. So that little rugby ball shape there between the D and the T adds up to 11. Similarly with this one, um, we know that 10 people own cats and tropical fish, so we can fill in a 3 there. And if we work backwards, we've got 15 people own dogs and cats, so we've already got a 7 in there. So if we put um, 8 to fill up that little rugby ball shape, and now we can come back to the first three bits of information because um, we've got these numbers here in the middle. All right? Then, yeah. So, yeah, I don't know what's going on there with the cursor. Right, so 40 own tropical fish. All right, so that entire circle has to add up to 40. All right, so if we do 4 plus 7 plus 3, work that out, take away from 40, and we get 26. So if we go back to cats, we know that circle there, all in all, is going to have to add up to 53. So 8 plus 7 plus 3, and then take that away from 53, gives us 35. And then we can finish off then with the dogs. Um, so I add up 8, 7, and 4, take it away from 25, and we'll get 6. All right? Now, still not finished, because we know she's got 100 clients altogether. So you want to double check, because there might be clients there that own, I don't know, a lion or a tiger or something. So um, they don't own a dog and a cat or a tropical fish, basically. So we do need to fill in uh, a number on the outside of the circle. So there's 11 people. You've got all those numbers up together, take them away from 100, you get 11. So that means there's 11 people that don't own a dog, a cat, or tropical fish. All right? Okay? So these are all the outcomes. All right? Now, if we divide, because the, she's serving 100 people, if we had divided all of them by 100, we could have actually filled in probabilities into those sections in the Venn diagram instead of numbers as well. Okay, so you can fill in either total numbers or you can fill in um, probabilities. So for probability of D only, you just, you're going to ignore the 8, 7 and the 4s I was pointing out just now. Uh, so it's just going to be 6 over 100, so that would be 0 0.06. Okay, uh, next up, we want to work out the probability that they own a tropical fish. Sorry, the complement of T, so that probably they just don't own a tropical fish. So that you're going to ignore all of the numbers that are inside the circle for T, and then add up the numbers that are outside that circle, so you'll be adding the 11, the 6, the 8, and the 35, which gives you 60, over 100, so that's just going to be 0 0.6. Okay, so the next one. This time I want to work at the probability that the client picked at random doesn't own any dog, cat, or tropical fish. Okay, so that's just going to be that number 11 that was on the outside of the circle. So it's simple, it's just 11 over 100, which would be 0 0.11. And you can leave these as fractions or as decimals, remember?